Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. I'd like to present today another calculation training exercise and I think this one is one of my favorites that I've encountered so far. It's black to play and I think it's a, it's made in seven. Um, let's just start to discuss the position itself. The first thing of note is that if it was white to move he would have a forced mate in two with just queen queen takes h6 and then followed up by uh, knight to f1 knight to f3 or knight to g4 any basically any knight move any of the knight moves which would clear the way for the rook to deliver mate because this um, bishop on f6 is taking away two critical escape squares for the black king. However, it's black to move and he himself has a very beautiful combination. Um, there's a lot of latent pressure with, with black's pieces and he's able to unleash a beautiful combination and uh, destroying the, the white's king's safety and delivering checkmate in seven moves. If you'd like to go ahead and solve this without any input from me, uh, please go ahead and do so. Otherwise, if you'd like to, me to hear my discussion of the elements, just continue listening. So, there are several interesting things in this position. The first thing I noticed is that the latent pressure and indirect control of the c1 and d2 squares by the dark squared bishop. I noticed that the rook on e3 is in a very active, prominent position for participating in the attack. The um, the knight on the a4 square is extremely well posted for participating in the attack, and you know might have threats such as coming into the c3 or, or capturing on b2 later and, and supporting the queen. The queen is on c7, it doesn't seem to have any immediate threats, but it's targeting some 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 weak points in um, white's position and might be able to sacrifice on the c2 or come into f3 later. The other knight, the knight on e6, stands in a more defensive central position, but it can spring into a more active square and might be able to participate in the attack by coming to this d4 square when it would stand very actively in the center of the board and uh, putting some pressure on some, on some squares in uh, white's position. And then the final thing that I noticed is that even though this, um, even though this rook on on g8 is standing quite passively at the moment, if this b file were to open up, the the rook could come and and put some very dangerous pressure on this b file and be able to participate in a mating attack. So there's a lot going on here and. One final thought that I had, one other element in this position, is that although white's pieces are extremely actively posted, only really the rook is in a position to participate in the defense because the rest of the pieces are away from the uh, this sort of queen side of the board and aren't really able to support a defensive role at all. So with all those things in mind, uh, please go ahead and pause the video and let's see if you can calculate all the way to mate for black. Uh, give yourself as much time as you, as you need. I would, I would recommend um, anything up to about 20 minutes. Um, and then once you're ready, just unpause and I'll be reviewing the solution. Okay. When I first um, solved this 
uh, problem. It took me a little while to find the correct candidate move, and actually I went down a number of different paths, and then only then realized what the correct solution was. So it was more or less a process of elimination. The correct starting move is rook to e1 check. And the primary purpose of this move is to take away the c1 and d2 squares from from the white king. So it's really helping to create a mating net. There's another advantage too, and that is that once the rook captures here, it, it's a little bit of the sting has gone out of white's attack as well because the rook is no longer posted on this dangerous edge file. Um, I did look briefly here at uh, knight to c3 check, and uh, and and in fact, black does win if he tries something. Uh, if he if he took on on c3 with b takes c3 but after king a1 there's no way to maintain the pressure on black there's no forcing move so um, I, I discounted that the, there's a very beautiful way to intensify the attack now and it involves a queen sacrifice so uh, queen c2 check uh, king takes is forced because if 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 white comes to the a1 square, of course, queen takes b2 would be mate. So there's a couple of nice things here. After the after the um, capture on this c2 square, will we see the um, the knight springing into this very prominent d4 square, and we can now start to see the effective collaboration of these two pieces that are controlling many squares around the, the white king. So already here white is in some danger. If for instance he comes to this excuse me, if he comes to this um, D1 square then there's already a, a mating net where black could come into B2 with mate with the uh, knight taking away these the e2 and c2 and the bishop taking away um, d2 and, and c1 so the only uh, way for white to, to kind of uh, con continue his defense is to come to b1 and there's a very beautiful way to continue the attack and in fact it's the only way only forcing move available in the position and that's knight to c3 so knight c3 check and again because of the very effective collaboration of these two knights there's only one uh, one possible move here that does because if king to a1 we've got this very nice mate with the the two knights uniting against the white king and making a nice mating net. So the only other idea is b takes c3. And this paves the way for the black rook to enter the fray. So now this uh, sleeping monster on g8 comes to b8 and is putting tremendous pressure against the white king. Notice that these two squares are both um, are both taken away from white so he only has two options here he can play the computer like defensive move bishop to b2 which really just staves off mate for one more move so we have rook takes b2 king to a1 is forced and we have a beautiful finish knight c2 mate so let's just review that combination from start to finish. There's something very aesthetic about it, and again, I like it very much because it involves the collaboration of all black's major and minor pieces. So rook e1, rook takes, queen takes c2, king takes, knight d4 check, king b1, knight c3 check, 
B takes C3, Rook B2, sorry, Rook B1, Bishop B2, Rook takes B2, King A1, and a beautiful finish with Knight, takes C, knight to C2 mate. Well, that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed this exercise as much as I did. And thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.